name is Michael Peterson, I go by Mick, and uh, this is the Racing Surfaces Testing Laboratory. I'm a professor in the Biosystems and Ag Engineering Department at University of Kentucky, but a portion of my appointment is Executive Director of the Racing Surfaces Testing Laboratory, which is a nonprofit that was founded in 2008 by industry stakeholders. That included New York Racing Association, Churchill Downs, Keeneland, uh, Santa Anita, the uh, California Association of Racing Fairs. A coalition came together to support the creation of this laboratory. Three years ago, the lab and I moved to Lexington from Orno, Maine. We have, now we have two functions that we, have, that we perform. We not only test the material that's being used on the racing surfaces, and that includes turf, dirt, and synthetic, but we also go to the track, do a series of standard test protocols, and support the maintenance crew in daily measurements on the racetrack. Those daily measurements include moisture, cushion depth, but we have a much more extensive test protocol that we do each race meet. So each race meet, talking a track like Keeneland, for both the fall and the spring meet, a month to six weeks before the start of the race meet, we do a comprehensive test working with the maintenance crew to look to make sure everything is in the right is ready for racing. If you think about it, this would be like your pre-flight inspection. You're sitting there on the tarmac, getting ready to take off for a flight. We're going to make sure that absolutely everything is right before the horses go on there or be before the riders are, are on the backs of those horses. So this testing includes not only taking samples, it includes the OBST, which simulates the front leg of a thoroughbred horse at a gala. It also includes ground penetrating radar, which allows us to inspect the base and make sure that the material is consistent around the track. We also take seven samples that come into this facility, and at this facility we do a series of up to 12 different tests in order to make sure that the material is consistent. That includes the normal tests that a lot of laboratories do about particle size distribution, sieve, and hydrometer, but it also includes things like uh, triaxial shear and x-ray diffraction where we verify the mineralogy, triaxial shear uh, measures the performance of the material under loading. So those, that comprehensive characterization allows us to test the track both spatially with seven samples and the ground penetrating radar that takes measurements every four inches, as well as temporally because some of the tracks that we've been working with, we are, we're comparing the data this, that we've been doing continuously for as long as a decade. So we can make sure that every year that the track is consistent from the previous year. What appears to us to be the biggest challenge is how do you shift from a sealed track to an open track? It's those transitions or unexpected weather, weather that's unusual for the climate. That can be rain in Southern California or a dry period at Saratoga. Both of those are a challenge. So what we what we're trying to do is we're trying to facilitate the conversation between the different maintenance crews and the different racetracks so that the response to a dry period in New York may look like a dry period where they're good at it in Southern California, use working closely with the maintenance methods that are used in New York so that when we get to a rainy period in Southern California, we can help them excel. I mean, we're the center of the thoroughbred industry, and the support we've received from the industry in the area has been extraordinary. The Jockey Club uh, last year uh, announced an extensive investment in expanding our capabilities, and we're also, our online database is now being transitioned by the Jockey Club to their servers. Keeneland, to me, has just turned out to be, uh, while we've been here, it's a giant laboratory. Their goal right now, the team that's over there right now, their goal is to be best in class. And so they keep pushing the envelope as far as looking at what else they can do to make a better, better surface over there. 
So we're living in an area here where there's a commitment to the horse and a commitment to the safety of the rider. And that makes this just an extraordinary place to work. We really want the real-time data. So what we've got now is the pre-flight inspection, if we to use my analogy of, uh, of, 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 of your commercial air, aircraft again, we've got the pre-flight inspection down pretty well. I'm fairly confident about that. What we don't have is we don't have the black box. So if we have a, an event on the track that we're concerned about, we really want to know in real time what the moisture content of that is. Now, as far as the pre-flight inspection, one of our challenges for that and where the Jockey Club donation is absolutely critical is all the tracks need to be participating. You know, it's a challenge financially for a lot of the uh, smaller tracks to, to participate in, in, in this sort of uh, monitoring system. But we need to remember there's still horses and riders who are risking their lives every day on those tracks. and so. What's important about the Jockey Club donation is it's allowed us to locate this equipment and expand the equipment. We should be able to be more responsive, as well as having this equipment should make it more affordable for the other tracks to be able to participate in this kind of pretty extensive system. The university has this pool of expertise, though. When we need somebody who knows turf grass, we had Greg Munshaw, who was there at, at University of Kentucky, who immediately stepped in. We need to understand something about the risk or communicate something about health of the horse. We've got the entire Glock Research Center to work with. We've got the resources that are provided by the equine programs, where the equine programs is pr producing this consistent uh, pool of people who have a passion for the horse and can work for it. So there's, we, 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 we put on both hats on this, and, 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 and the university has these resources and these abilities, and then the nonprofit is, you know, when you need something quick, I mean, we're, the, we're here and functioning. And it also works as well to help the industry understand how these pieces fit together. Uh, horse racing is a, is, 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 is a, is a complicated, fascinating passion for those of us who are involved with it. But the horse racing needs the support of the university. The horse racing also provides opportunities for the students. And these sorts of synergies are just so exciting and it's unique to University of Kentucky.